At the movie's beginning, a man named Frank talks to his wife on the phone while walking around town. His wife tells him how she found out through a real estate agent that he's buying an apartment. It was supposed to be a surprise for their anniversary, but the agent has ruined everything and Frank gets angry. While in rage, he stands still in one spot talking on the phone. A couple installs an air conditioner on the balcony, but once it's put in, it falls in Frank's direction, who manages to move out of the way in time. Just as he thinks he's safe, a bus hits him and kills him. Then, a miraculous thing happens. Once Frank is dead, he becomes a spirit and people pass through him. Jumping into a dental office, we see Dr. Bertram Pincus, an extremely apathetic man. In fact, he seems to hate people. Returning home, he conspicuously avoids any kind of contact with other people. In particular, he refuses to help a woman who needs help with boxes, closing the elevator in her face. Once he returns, he takes laxatives and they seem to have an effect. The following day, he prepares for his surgery. Before surgery, he fills out a form with a very unfriendly attitude. He is taken on a stretcher to the operating room. The doctor asks Bertram why he required anesthesia for a simple colonoscopy. He answers vaguely and starts mistreating the doctors. Once discharged, he talks about some strangers in the operating room, but the doctor knows nothing about it. Once out of the hospital, he talks to a woman who is incredibly amazed that he can see her. At that point, she starts following him. The same thing happens with an elderly couple and more and more people start following him. One of them calls out to him as he crosses the street. Bertram notices a truck coming right in the stranger's direction. Yet just when he should have run him over, he sees that the car simply drove right through him. Not feeling well, he begins to flee and manages to get away from the spirits. He asks the doctors for an explanation of what is happening to him. The doctor seems to be hiding something from him. Still, he is told that he had a cardiac arrest for seven minutes because of the anesthesia. Back home, he meets Frank, the man who died at the film's beginning. Frank wants to ask him for a favor. Bertram, however, escapes by getting into a cab. Despite this, he finds Frank beside him. Frank lets him know that he has just taken his wife's cab. His wife seems to have a severe problem and Frank tries to convince Bertram to help her. Soon after, they arrive at a bar. Bertram tells him about how he was dead for seven minutes. This is the reason why he can see spirits like Frank. In fact, the other people cannot see Frank, so they think Bertram is talking to himself. While the two are chatting, another spirit, this time an old woman, approaches and asks Bertram for a favor, but Bertram gets up and leaves. Outside the bar, Frank continues to ask for help. According to him, his wife is about to marry an evil man and Bertram must prevent it. The dentist's attitude does not change. He has no intention of helping him. In fact, he goes away hoping that it is only a temporary after effect of anesthesia. As he sleeps, he suddenly wakes up with all the spirits watching him and asking for favors. Leaving the room, Frank says he has revealed his address to everyone. At this critical moment, Bertram agrees to help him and asks Frank to be left alone by the other spirits. The next day, they attend a conference that Gwen, Frank's ex-wife, is presenting. The woman talks about a mummy whose cause of death is still uncertain, and she is determined to find the reason for his demise. During the conference, they decide to use a third person who should break the relationship between Gwen and the man she's dating. Thinking about who could play this role, Bertram describes the ideal candidate in his image. Frank immediately understands where he's going and laughs it off. Despite their initial hesitancy, they proceed in this manner. The dentist gets to work right away. At the end of the lecture, he approaches Gwen and apologizes for stealing her cab. He also apologized for ignoring her for every time she talked to him. The woman remains defensive, showing some resentment. From that day forward, Frank tells him everything about Gwen. Knowing his wife well, she gives him various tips to win her over. A few days later, as fate would have it, Gwen and Bertram meet in the elevator. Bertram is too excited and behaves strangely, embarrassing Gwen. Nevertheless, Gwen's attitude changes dramatically when Bertram reveals to her that he knows the cause of the death of the mummy she's studying. So, they schedule a meeting to examine it together. Bertram carefully prepares ahead of the big day, changing his style a bit. During the examination, 
The two increase their confidence in each other. They ease the tension with a series of jokes, and the conversation gets easier. Gwen shows him the mummy's reproductive organ, and Bertram is impressed. Once they leave, the two begin to tell each other about some past experiences. She says her tooth hurts at one point and gets examined on the spot. At that instant, spirits approach and distract Bertram. Soon after, Gwen's boyfriend Richard also arrives. Before leaving with Gwen, the man politely invites him to dinner. Later that night, Gwen's husband offers Bertram a job. Bertram does not take the job offer seriously and jokes about it. During the evening, Frank does nothing but criticize Richard. In the meantime, the lawyer is called on the phone and walks away for a moment. Apparently, Bertram knows how to make women laugh. Gwen has some good laughs at his jokes. Richard returns and says goodbye to his wife and Bertram, after which he leaves for work, leaving the two alone. Bertram and Gwen walk the dog and go for a drink in a restaurant. Here, Gwen tells him about her relationship with Frank. As a joke, Bertram offers to write down Frank's negative qualities on a piece of paper. Gwen reveals that Frank was selfish, obsessed with self-control. Frank gets tired of hearing all this, and just as he's about to leave, Gwen reveals that he cheated on her. Frank's version of events begin to fall apart. Ultimately, Richard has done nothing wrong, and Bertram realizes that his mission is just a selfish whim. So, Bertram decides to leave Gwen and Richard alone, as she loves him and deserves to be happy. Frank threatens to make his life hell, but that does not change Bertram's opinion. In the next scene, while washing her own dog, Gwen's eyes fall on the ring from the upcoming wedding, and she begins to reflect on it. During a visit to work, Bertram sees many spirits in the waiting room and proceeds to run away from them. Once he returns, he is notified of an emergency visit. The patient is indeed Richard. During the visit, the man hints that something is going wrong with Gwen. Richard does not want to say openly what it is, and to get him to talk, Bertram inhales nitrous oxide into him. Later that day, Frank catches up with Bertram on the street and asks him to complete the mission they had agreed on. It turns out that Richard and Gwen are not going to get married, and she's going for six months to Egypt for work. So in fact, the mission is accomplished. Richard will not marry Gwen, so Frank has to leave Bertram alone. Then, Bertram makes it clear that he is the one who wants to win Gwen now. Frank does not take this seriously. He laughs about it. Bertram and Gwen meet for a walk, where he brings her a gift, a relatively expensive keychain. The date, however, does not go as hoped. Bertram lets slip details he could only know through Frank, and the woman grows increasingly suspicious. At that point, Bertram tries to tell her the truth, but it all sounds crazy. So he tells her to ask him a question concerning something that only Frank could have known to prove to her the truth. It's about a nightmare Frank used to have. Frank reports a wrong answer to him, and Gwen, offended, walks away, giving him back the gift. Bertram asks Frank why he reported the wrong answer to him. The latter tells him that Gwen doesn't need another person as selfish and heartless as he was alive. The dentist sits on a park bench and reflects on it until evening comes. Then he is joined by a deceased man and woman who each ask for a favor. As in previous times, he refuses to help, so they disappear and among other things, it begins to hail. Bertram goes to work before opening time to think some more. When his colleague arrives, he explains part of his situation to him. Then, he asks him to prescribe medicine to help his thoughts disappear. The man takes Bertram to his study, where he sits down and shows him a quote from Einstein. Only a life lived for others is worth living. These words illuminate the man's life, who decides to change his attitude towards people. In fact, one by one, he helps all the deceased carry out the task they have required of him for so long. He helps the old woman first, and once he's done what she's asked of him, a street lamp lights up and makes her disappear. Arriving at the fourth favor, he discovers that the person who has requested it is none other than the deceased husband of one of his patients, to whom he never paid attention. A few days later, Bertram reaches the lecture Gwen gave, and once it is over, he tries to explain his change to her. He further explains that for Frank's spirit to disappear, she must let him go and stop dwelling on him. As she leaves angrily, she notices that Bertram is talking to himself, believing that he is talking to Frank. Bertram follows her to report what Frank wants to tell her, 
but a bus hits him just as it happened to Frank. He realizes he is dead and observes the scene right along with Frank. When they least expect it, Richard arrives and performs first aid that brings Bertram back to life. In the hospital, once he awakens, the dentist's attitude is entirely different. After the accident, Gwen visits Bertram to see how he's doing. Bertram reveals to her Frank's secret nightmare. Now, however, Bertram can no longer see Frank as he has now found his own way. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.